what I've used is uh, an entry level uh, in my cover letter, right? To show, hey, I know about the culture. So I really lo love that Amazon insists on the highest standards as one of their leadership principles. Shows I've done some research, I understand the culture. You must love working there. I'm graduating in May and looking to connect with recruiters so I can learn where my experience and skills will provide the most value. I'd like to connect and add you to my professional network. So I, again, I just showed I did a little bit of research. I didn't ask for anything more than a connection request. And when they accept this, then I'll, follow, I'll have a follow-up question and we'll continue this, right? So what I've seen is if you ask specific questions in a connection request, people just accept it and they don't respond to the questions. So you're better off to just get the connection and then send a follow-up message to ask your specific question and continue the conversation. Here's another short video. One minute, actually. We're going to have to be on LinkedIn to get a job today. But how do you get the recruiters to come find you? These are the best ways to amplify your profile to get the attention of the recruiters. Let's start at the top with your photo. According to LinkedIn, profiles with photos receive 21 times more profile views and up to nine times more connection requests. Here's something you may not have thought about. Recruiters screen by location, and leaving your location app takes you out of the running for a lot of jobs. According to LinkedIn, adding your location makes you 23 times more likely to be found in LinkedIn searches. You've probably been told 100 times to leave the objective off your resume. The rules are different here. LinkedIn tells us a summary is the number one thing recruiters look at when viewing a profile. Use it as your opportunity to talk about your experience, motivation, interests, and skills. It matters. If you maximize your LinkedIn profile, you may not be looking for your next job. It could come find you. Nothing groundbreaking, right? But I want to hear it from somebody else and not just me saying it, right? And you've already had some training on that. And what I'm, I'll cover this in another slide, but I'll say it here, is about location, right? So you say Buffalo, and then there's actually not a lot of jobs in Buffalo. So what you need to do is put, in, include in your summary that you are willing to relocate for a job. Because the first thing they're gonna do is read that first paragraph or two of your summary, and if they don't know you're willing to relocate, they may overlook you, right? Um, another thing I'm gonna add, so I don't forget it later, I don't know what everybody's headline looks like on their profile, but I've seen a lot of UB students and it may say like MIS graduate student 2018, May 2018. Rec the way recruiters are using LinkedIn is they're searching by titles. If they're looking for data scientists or they're looking for business analysts, they're searching by those keywords. So those keywords need to be included in your headline. So if I was in your seat, my headline would say seeking data analyst role graduating May 2018. So just make sure you're using these keywords so that you are found when recruiters are searching by the titles of the positions that you're looking for. So now let's, you connected with me, General, I'm standing here with you telling you what to do. Now let's start to do a little more research into a company you wanna work for, trying to find a recruiter or a hiring manager. And if you don't wanna send the request right now, that's fine, but let's do the research right now. So think of th three companies that you would love to work for. And ser let's search them right now, okay? So if it's keywords, And this is something, I don't know if you have noticed, right, but the search feature just changed last week. LinkedIn's co constantly pushing out these changes. So before, if we searched for people or for companies over here on the, what's your left-hand side? No, what's your right-hand side over here? Used to kind of have all your drill-down features for your search. Now they've moved these up here to the top where you can drill down by location, connections, or I think the best way is just go all filters and then you'll get your, your drill down search fields back. So you can, or let, you know, let's start with just one company. What's, you know, if you could go to any company 
in the US to get your job, think of who that is and let's type that in the company field. And we'll look for recruiters in this example. So I'm gonna type recruiter in the title field. I'm looking in the United States, so I'm gonna select the location. Apply our search. Amazon is an overwhelming example, right? When you got 300,000 employees. But uh, there's 125 people that come up with recruit, or 1,255 people that come up with recruiters. I would say pick one, and you can do this for any company, right? You don't have to watch mine if you wanna search your own company and find a real recruiter at a company you're looking at. We can always go back and add another So I really like looking at people's recent activity and usually find it under there. So yeah, a little more than halfway down the screen, under the summary, under the highlights, you'll find someone's activity. And when you look at all activity, you'll see anything they've liked or commented on or posted. You can go to post and you just see what the information is that they're posting and sharing. And if you go to articles that, you know, something they took time to write, so they, are, they may have a little more even uh, pride in that piece of work. But so if I wanted to connect with Jason, I would look at his activity. He's talking about Amazon, sharing something about Amazon from a coworker. Talking about open positions. bilingual leadership position. So when we look at Jason, we see he's hiring for operations leadership, right? It's pretty clear what he's hiring for. So now if I was to connect with Jason, I would talk about, I see that you're hiring for operational leadership positions. I'm very familiar with the 12 leadership principles of Amazon. This is my favorite one. I'd like to connect with you. Shows I read through stuff. It shows I'm familiar with what kind of positions he's recruiting for. And I give him a reason to connect with me. Make sense? So there's, and we're gonna get into this in more detail in a few slides, but there's two ways that you can search for alumni and it's either through the company page and seeing what alumni work there, or you can do a more broad search by going to UB, typing in a keyword like MIS or analyst, and then having a more broad response of where people work, what cities are hiring, people that were in your degree program or for the title you're searching for. So now we've talked about general connection requests, connecting with recruiters or hiring managers. And what I'll say about recruiters is their role is to recruit and find talent and fill positions. But in my prospecting efforts, whether it's getting a job or it's landing a new client, my suggestion is to have multiple points of contact within the same company, within the department, because if you can get to the hiring manager who's overseeing the data analyst, for example, the recruiter just has to make the call, right? And he has to qualify it. But if you make a better personal connection with someone in the department that will then make a, recall, a call to the recruiter for you, they can get the recruiter to call you back. So don't just go for the recruiter and stop there. Uh, my, you know, this, take this with a grain of salt, but I like to start high and then work my way down. Now that doesn't mean I reach out to Jeff Bezos and expect him to respond. But I go to a, a VP or a director, if there's a common connection, and I start with them. And the success I have in business is when I start at the top, if we connect, like not just, yeah, he accepts my connection, but we talk and he likes me, 
and he says, he filters me down. He says, talk to this guy or talk to this girl, right? And when the boss says, talk to me, they got to talk to me. So maybe the recruiter wouldn't have accepted. But when his manager says, I want you to talk to Mike, give him a call about this data analyst role you got posted. He's got to hear me out. And I'm going to check back in with the boss after he talks to me and say, hey, thanks for putting a word in. Dan just called me about that open position. And it seems like it went well. If there's anything else I should know about the position, please let me know. But thanks for giving me the introduction. And that's another thing, just gratitude. If someone does help you in any way, give you a name, point you in the right direction. That's another thing I say all the time. It's like, if you could just point me in the right direction, I'll do the rest of the work. Tell me, the right, tell me who the hiring manager is for this position I see posted, and I'll go talk to them, you know? But make sure you tell somebody thank you when they help you out, because then they will continue to do it. But if you're ungrateful or you don't express being grateful, they may not respond to your next message, right? So that's just common courtesy stuff. So now we'll, uh, we'll search for an alumni here. Don't even worry about this screen. We'll go to the next one here. So here's just a sample message of a connection to an alumni, something I may write. I'll tell you, I've done deep alumni networking and connection requests. They're accepted at a very high rate. Again, people that share that alumni experience, that common education, are likely to accept and a lot of them are going to be likely to help you. So just something as simple as saying we're both graduates from UB or we're both graduates from the MIS program or maybe they don't even go to the school but they have the same degree as you. I see you, I see we both have degrees in MIS and you're working at Lockheed Martin and I'd like to work at Lockheed Martin, can we connect? And then I tell them when I'm graduating what my degree is and what I'm looking for. One short, sweet sentence, knows a little bit more about me, my intentions for connecting. Lockheed Martin is a company I'm interested in. See, I see you've been there for a while. I'd love to add you to my network. Can we connect? And I do this a lot. I just throw the question in, can we connect? That's my ask, right? Can we connect? Yeah, sure. Click, we're in. And once I'm in, then we continue to nurture this. So let's do an alumni search and the things you look for to make the common connection with alumni are, is the degree, is the role they have. Maybe you're searching UB by data analyst for someone that has the role that you want. Maybe that's not even their current role, it was a past role. Even better, how did you get that job? How did you get promoted? Kind of follow their career path into leadership. See how many years experience they have because you do have experience. So you're not all necessarily going to have to land in an entry level role. Some of you may be able to get something a little more senior. Recent shares and posts make the uh, invitation personal. So the next screen we'll see this. But when we, I mentioned this earlier, I didn't want to forget it, but in your headline, in your summary, make sure you reflect the keywords you're searching for, the titles you want to be found, the titles you're going to apply for, because that's how people are going to find your profile. I believe you get this with I don't know if you get this with only with Sales Navigator, but let me show you on mine here. Tell me if you, if you see this on your screen, okay? When you go to your own profile you, and you look at your dashboard, do you see this search appearance number? I am paying for it. That's why you see that. You, no, they don't see that. You can see that. Because I am logged into the regular browser, not into my Sales Navigator browser, which has a whole other dashboard. So if you click in here, okay, it tells you where people work that have been searching for your profile and found you. So it starts to give you a little insight. Maybe it's people looking for jobs. Um, so you get top five companies. You get what the people do. If you got it, less, some people, if you, you can turn on this job feature that you're looking for a job, there's a feature in there as well. I'll make sure I show you, which I was not thinking about. What they do, if a majority are recruiters. And then the keywords people use to find you. So this is something constantly tweaking 
what is in here so that I continue to get found by more people every week. And though that refreshes every seven days, how, what companies found you, how many people found you, and what the keywords were. So if you're looking for data analyst roles or computer scientist roles, ultimately that's what you're gonna to wanna to see down here because people are finding you for what you wanna be found for, right? That's right. If you don't have the experience, that's one of the great uses for your summary because your summary should be future focused, not just past focused. Yes. Sorry, buddy. No, no, please, you know. So you, you got your data people, right? So just make sure you're taking advantage of the limited analytics that they're giving you to use that to your advantage and, and track those numbers over time. Oh, there's another thing uh, I want to tell you. I don't think I brought the link. I'll come to that later. <clears throat> so the same way you're going to search for jobs is the same way recruiters are going to search for you. That's why these keywords are important. Just like an SEO, keyword density is important. So if it's data analyst, data scientist, product manager, like use all the words and use some of them more than once throughout your summary, throughout your profile, you have your skills section. Make sure you're listing your skills and the titles there as well because they all help drive search results back to your page. 87% of recruiters are using LinkedIn either to recruit or to research people that have applied for positions. 122 million people received interviews from their LinkedIn profiles in 2017. Okay, so now we're gonna walk through these searches. Uh, a company, so we're gonna call this account-based prospecting and then we're gonna do an alumni search. So when you have a company in mind, you know, if you've got your top three, these are the companies that and this, these are my dream companies I want to land at. You want to do deep research on the company so you understand what they're hiring for, what their, again, leadership principles are, what the culture is like, and make multiple contacts within that account. So what, if we're going to do, I want you to do this, right? So if you just open up your browser, go to the your home screen, go up to the search bar, type in the name of a company, you're gonna get the drop down that's gonna say people or companies, select company. Let me do something a little smaller. So the first thing I would look for is who are our common connections? Are there any? And I would start there. Do I know them? How well do I know them? Look at their profiles, send them some messages, try and move the relationship from a connection to something a little more personal. Let them know what my intentions are. If I don't have common connections, I would click in to view all of the employees that are listed on LinkedIn at least. Everybody's not there, but majority are. So once I'm in here looking at all of the employees, I would drill down by all filters. I would probably start with a role that I want to have at the company. Data analyst, computer scientist, product manager, whatever that is. And if it's not a huge company, you may just type in a word like analyst. So you find data analyst and business analyst, and you can just eliminate if it's a telecom analyst or something that doesn't apply. So for rich products, I might be able to get away with analyst. Oh, but I, I would also select second degree connections and start there. That means you have at least one common connection. Not that you have to reference that person, but at least it's somewhat in your network. Maybe it's Melissa that's connected with someone at the company, another alumni. You see her connected. Maybe you say, hey, Melissa, I see you're connected with. 
John who graduated in 2012 and he's working at Amazon and how well do you know him? Can you make an intro? Maybe she can, maybe she can't, right? But I will. She will. <laughs> She'll do anything she can to help you. That's why she called me. You apply to do your search. So I got no analyst. I spelled that wrong? Nope. Did I? My mother used to work in public relations, so she proofreads all of my uh, marketing materials before they go out. So when I got specific with which products and search data analyst, I only found one person. So who would I want to reach out to? And I would look in, where did she go to school? And you at some point, you guys got a data science degree over there? MIS degree? She got an MBA. Oh, look at that, UB. So if I wanted to connect with Lauren, who's a data data analyst at Rich Products. I would use the alumni, right, template that I showed you and, hey Lauren, I see you're a graduate of UB and you got an MBA from NU and you're in an analyst role at Rich Products. Are there any other, uh, how, ma how many analysts do they have there? Can we connect and start from there, right? We break the ice, we show that common connection, we connect with her and we try and build a relationship to have a conversation. Who are some of the companies you've searched for out in the audience? Somebody want to tell me who you're looking, where you're looking for jobs? Somebody, anybody? Amazon. Amazon. Comcast. Comcast. I like that. I'm a telecom guy. Philadelphia. Yeah. Yep. Good. Anybody else? Google, good, you guys are go, go big, I like it. So if, I'm gonna ask you, because I've already talked about this, right? So if you're gonna go into this profile, you're doing account-based prospecting, you're going narrow, you're looking at the company you wanna work at, what things are you looking for in the profile so you can make this connection? Should be at least two or three things, right? You're looking to include in this intro message to the alum. What would you talk about? Show some interest in their profile. What? Interest in some article or some, some activity, recent activity. That's right. What, what have they engaged in, right? Their, their posts, their likes, an article they've shared, an article they've written. Very good. Same school, obviously, right? It's an alumni connection. Talk about the school they went to, show that you read the profile. They're very likely to accept that first personalized connection request. So I know what the next slide is. The next slide is just gonna do, is gonna be a search by the university. So now I want you to go back to the search bar and search University of Buffalo. First place I would start, or you know, could be connections, but really because we're looking for people with a certain role, let's just start there. So we're gonna see all the alumni. And this is really a great page, right? The, the analytics and the data that's available in these Career Insight pages. So the first they're showing us is just all alumni that are on LinkedIn, 136,000. <coughs> So I say we start by looking by keyword. Again, let's go for one of these titles of the jobs that you're looking for. 
And if you're something other than a data analyst, right, type that in. So you're looking at what's relevant to you. And you see when I type data analyst, it's just giving me one search term. So I can add three, four, five titles that I'm looking for that people would have. And ultimately, those are the jobs that I want that I would start with. It was project manager, you said, or pro, pro, product manager? I'm just going to look in a little deeper into these analytics. You do the same, right? Click show more, it'll expand the menu. So if you have a, a city in mind that's ideal for you, you could start by looking into the city. Is it New York, is it San Francisco, is it DC, and then see where these people are working, what companies that these alumni are employed at. Or if it's by a department or um, an industry, you can click into IT or you can click into engineering or finance. All right, good um, industries for your degrees. And you see, right, obviously that's where most of the jobs are happening. And after you click into any of these, and you can click in multiple, let's say I do IT, engineering, and finance. And you scroll down, then you start to see these 1,100 alumni that I had in my search results. So now you start looking through titles, you look at this, connection area to see how many common connections you have you can click in there see who you know or who you know that knows them and uh, maybe ask for introductions and again the, the more people in your network the more common connections you're going to have the more opportunities you have for that intro By show of hands, who has been using this feature in your prospecting before today? Have you been going into the UB page and searching for alumni? If not, that's okay, right? That's why you're here and I hope that you do moving forward. 